Exhibit map number one, and uh, I, it, let's go back to the uh, the pick and bands, right? It's Exhibit, Asylum, and District. Naturally, Exhibit is E United's map pick. It's one that they're very comfortable on. It's one that they have had great success on, but they have also had their struggles in split two, especially with the transition from 5v5 to 4v4, because it wasn't, remember, this map wasn't in the last rotation split one. So with its return, United hasn't looked necessarily the best on this map. Fire Nice is a great team here as well. This is a must win in this series, because as we head into Asylum, Fire and Ice should have a huge leg up there and might be able to win this 2-0 if the United doesn't answer here. But then again, United's been playing out of their mind recently, so this is going to be a great map for Fearsley. He's not wasting any time. He's pushing straight into Kenny. This 1v1 is going to be taking place, ladies and gentlemen, the entire match. Fearsley's going to pressure up on a Kenny. I actually like this. Fearsley's not going to... He's going to take his, his life into his own hands. He's going to say, look, I need to make sure I get this fight off because if we give Kenny the advantage, he's going to pressure our home hill. Fearsley hit a big brick. Now you see them push back, and, and this is basically cat and mouse. Whoever wins this is going to give them the advantage for their team. They're going to be able to push across the top, be able to try to go for the backside of the team. And they're not going to get anything going. Yeah, actually, Toadie's already gone to the B hill. That's a good cap. It's going to be up for Fire Nice to make. It's going to be up for Fire Nice to play defense. E United is going to have to make a move. Nobody is still one the one v one up top, and I think Dyslexic has become the target of the aggression for United. Still rotating around. Dyslexic's just trying to catch somebody slipping. Yeah. Fearsley, the one to push this, but Kenny kind of playing around. Fire Nice, though, still has that neutral down low. Let's keep that in mind. Fearsley doesn't necessarily need to push this if he doesn't want to. Explosive, though, will take down Dyslexic, and maybe down low is going a little bit better. Finally, the engagement is underway. Both are going to be tagged up a little bit. Either way, this has been the longest standoff I think I've seen on Exhibit. I think they're going to run. There's only six more shots in Fearsley's Nasher. This is the most impressive part. There, there we go. I was going to say, thank God he united won the fights around the rest of the map because Fearsley was probably looking down at his shells and he was like, man, I better hit a shot here soon because I've got six <laughs> to go or I'm going to have to find a dead corpse somewhere on this map that dropped a Nasher. Good first round right, by United, so. though. The, the retake yeah. down low gives them their first round because they get the aggression. They get the aggression to actually come back across toward that uh, the Locust exhibit. They pince out Dyslexic. They push him back to the back side of the, the uh, Ocean exhibit side, and then they go to the Locust side, the opposite side of the map, and actually get a free kill. Zeros across the board for fire and ice. That's tough. Go into round number two. See how well this is going to work out. Let's see, we'll get that standoff up top between Fearsley and Kenny. Down low, though, Explosive did a great job isolating Dyslexic, taking him down. We'll see if that will be replicated. Grace not wasting any time. He's going to hit a nice stun and also this little shot onto exploits, but uh, really no damage done. The United, though, is going to be the first one to get a touch. Toadie is going to be there, though, looking to shut him down with the bolt talking. A lot of action, a lot of rotations here, but no one able to establish control because no one's dropped as of yet. So the first one to drop is definitely going to give a disadvantage to their team, and the first one is going to be explosive. Quickly answer back with Dyslexic. Praise, though, is going to also fall. Exploit's going to let him bleed out. Sagger to death. He's going to look to take in the neutral. Toadie's going to be challenged, though, from one of the E United members just up ahead, and that's going to be Powers. It's going to be a tough 1v1, but now he has the help of his teammate. Full talk shot is in. Powers drops and fire and ice off to the races to A. Exploit's trying to just check who's going up top. He catches explosive. That's a good job. They're going to know that they're playing a little bit more defense. They tried to stop everybody from going across the top of the map. And that allows fire and ice to kind of set up a little bit more defensively. You see Kenny's trying to push across. Humans. Back here to the home hill of fire and ice. He gets two good shots on a fierce explosive with a wrap. Gets the kill. Tony is going to have a lot of Lance of Fire out, but look at the top side. They've got him caught out for the top. That's good Lance of Fire. That's a great down. Explosive is going to be able to clean that up, I think. Good job there. They're not going to allow the respawn to come back and get him. And I believe player number two, Dyslexic, is going to be able to push back into the tide. Player number four, Fearsley, as well. Come off a respawn and try to take over the fight. Mm. That's a great pincer movement. Fearsley versus Kenny. Big fight here at the top of the stairs. Kenny's finally going to go down. That's going to open things back up across the top of the map after they get their home hill back in favor. Fire and Ice are finding their way back into this round with a 2-1 to one hill cap. Genuinely say... United's teamwork has been where I think it needed to be all alone, right? And we're really seeing that championship caliber, or caliber key, a team 
start to come through, and uh, I'm just all around impressed. I really am. Fire and Ice, though, like you mentioned, back in the saddle. They take the 2-1, to one, and they already had the point lead to boot, so they're looking that much more impressive to close out this round, tie it up 1-1. to one. But the United has probably got some tricks up their sleeves, but Kenny's getting reckless. He's pushing fiercely, aggressively, and he needs to. He's got to try and put uh, matters into his own hands, but this is a big win for him, and he takes it. That should open up the door to go to Charlie. No one from uh, Fire and Ice is going to be able to meet him, but what can the rest of his team do on, on the neutral? Gotcha. That's a great start right there for X Boys to shut him down, but that's four dead. The only oh, person coming it. off a of spawn is Fearsley. He's gonna have to get back to the Sea Hill. He's got help with dyslexic. Two players coming at Kenny. One more second. Fearsley's gonna get in, but he's gonna wow. die immediately. Oh goodness gracious! That's a last second gasp effort. E United back to back rounds. They are just too good in those final moments. They are getting the kills where they need it to accumulate the hills. Man, and that again, I go back to the teamwork. Phenomenal job from E United and the composure. That's something that has always been in their favor. And that's why they've always been able to pull, or I shouldn't say always, but more often than not, pull off those big comebacks in the end where they're down a considerable number of points or just down in general and lock in a domination. I owe a lot of that, though, to Kenny winning that top fight once again, something he has struggled with throughout Pro League, but is consistently beginning better in those 1v situations, even though they actually took him off of that. But here, on exhibit it stays pretty true he's always going to be that person up top but him opening up that door applying that pressure to fire and ice putting them in a frenzy and allowing his teammates then to get onto the neutral a little bit easier because the manpower wasn't there well done from kenny well done from e united fire and ice struggling to close out rounds raise gets a good shot there on exploits he's gonna get pushed up by toady now toady doesn't get any early shots on fakes the up a turns back that shot delay does help him get the down though but now he's being pressured up another pincer moving out by e united double shot down on a toady that's going to be another dead staggering the deaths of fire and ice powers is the only player for e united down right now rolls right back into the b hill explosive will pull back with praise as they know they have to be careful of the respawns coming out explosive though he's not going to go without a fight he's going to take one to the grave with his teammate praise so he's going to even things up, but nobody's been able to get into that B-Hill to slow it down. Not just yet. Two to one for Fire and Ice once again. And they've consistently been able to do that, right? But it's a United's ability to be able to react and respond to what F and I is doing. That has made all the difference in the world. Dyslexic, though, lurking in the shadows. And just see what numbers he can find. And he definitely will have some numbers ahead of him. Me up top, though, brings fiercely full red. And uh, man, is that three times in a row, or at least is he two for two for three in terms of that fight up top against fiercely? The problem is, is that Toadie's right there. Sure. Toadie was waiting in the wings to get that kill. Even though they win that fight, they don't really get the pressure they need across top. They're going to get the B-Hill back, but three play two players still down here pressuring the ocean exhibit side of the map onto Powers and Praise. They've got one down. They're going to continue to go for these revives. Thankfully, Explosive over the top with that retro. A lot of damage out from it. Continuing to place down. Continuing to help get these kills. This is going to be absolutely picture perfect for E United, but fiercely waiting in the wings here at the Locust exhibit. You have to be careful. He's just trying to sneak up. The reason he's walking so slowly is he's trying not to let his footsteps get hurt. If you roadie run, you sound like a herd of elephants trampling across the Sahara. <laughs> True, Meanwhile, yeah. Just, look at this. He's got a flank. He's got a huge flank. He's behind Praise and Powers, and now Powers and Praise have to pick a fight. They both go down. This could be the opening they need because even though they've crossed the 200-point threshold, the decap and the retake of B and maybe one decap at C could win them the round. Here comes the decap at B. It's a 40-point differential up to 230 or so. That's big. Oh, my God. God dyslexic. That's big. Still one more to deal with up there. That's going to be Powers, I do believe, that he has to get through regardless. So the rest of the teammates pushing in. Big elimination onto Powers. Praise also falls. The hill has been broken, but player eight has snuck through, and he's going all the way over towards A. Dyslexic is going to be coming off the respawn, and most likely that 1v1 should be what determines it, but he backs off, and he's going to allow his teammates to battle these last two members from F and I, who are still going for the domination. You know United can still get one hill and win, but they have to do it right here, right now. And the United does get the break. Fire and Ice wins that fight. Now 1v1 again between Dyslexic on the opposite end and Explosive. He needs to win this, but I think it's a bit too late. Fire and Ice passes the threshold of no return, and they will take the victory. Very well done. They could not 
get the kills to help them get back onto their home. And it was a beautiful try by Explosive. You saw him get the decap at the home hill of Fire and Ice. And then he pulled back toward, excuse me, he pulled back toward that mid B hill. And then he got the call out that, you know, they're already there. He's looking for you. You might as well go back to the home and take the 1v1. Not enough, not in time. That's a collapse toward the end of the round by E United. I, I can't really believe I saw it happen, but it, it all started with that first kill by Dyslexic up top onto Kenny. Once Kenny got baited into going for the up A and to be able to get that shot on and get taken down, that opened things up for Fire Nice to come straight down those, those stairs into the home hill. This next round is going to be very interesting to me because it's, again, the last round of the half. You you're still really don't have any true power weapons on the, on the field. You've got the shock out. For the side of Fire and Ice, I believe. And then you've got the Retro Boltock opposite end. I mean, Explosive ever lurking with that Retro is going to be so dangerous. That Shock is going to be basically a one-time use to try to rally around somebody, get a kill, get somebody down. Not sure he's going to be able to get that kill, though. Dyslexic is full red. He's going to throw that flashback out. Toadie's holding on to it. Player number three is kind of the linchpin for me. So player number three, as you mentioned, Toadie. Toadie does have that Shock. But like you said, it's a one-time use, right? So you got to put a lot of emphasis into Explosive with the Retro, who is actually just going to be on the other side. Shock's going to be thrown out, and that's going to force these boys from EU back. Dyslexic was going on the attack, but now they're going to be separated. But what's the game plan from here? The Shock is down. You've separated yourself and pushed EU back, but you got no value from it. But now you have to consistently worry about Explosive with the Retro. So again, was it worth it to just throw it out there recklessly? Thankfully, the uh, respawn timers start after pickup rather than on use. So that next shock for the side of Fire and Ice is going to come back very quickly. Phrase is going to get down there. He's going to get pinchered out by two members of Fire and Ice. Explosive has to rotate back. He finds himself trying to rotate over to the Locust exhibit to help out. They get, ex they get exploits down, I think, in the middle. Dyslexic versus, I, I can't tell if that's Powers or Phrase. It's Phrase in the middle. Explosive goes with a turnaround reaction. Doesn't get it to go. There's another down, but... I mean, Praise is going to have to go absolutely massive here. You see, I think Powers goes for the hop and the drop. They're going to get the double shot down on the Toadie. Now Powers and Praise working through the middle of the map. Powers is down, but he uh, misrolls out. And a beautiful shot will help E United win that fight. Praise has got to check that cubby corner. He gets called out by Explosive. Goes for the double bounce. Doesn't get it. Exploits. It's two beautiful shots to get him killed off. And they give the life lead right back over to Fire and Ice. This is danger territory. This is where E United needed to settle in with their 2-1 to one hills and get the point lead back. I agree. You talk about that over-aggression, right? Sometimes it comes to bite them in the butt. And at this point, Fire and Ice going to make some magic happen. Looking to lock in B. Exploits to... Oh, no, he needed that win against Ex uh, Powers, but Powers is going to manage to get the breakthrough. Takes down Tony as well. Dyslexic in a fight with Kenny. He's going to be snubbed out, and Dyslexic will fall. Kenny is down, but it's okay. Even though he's finished off, B goes back into the hands of E United. That's the 2-1 to one in their favor, but still a lot of rounds to be played. Fiercely up top trying to hold off E United. So many members pushing him. He at least has two against him. Oh, and he's in no man's land at this point. He's got to try and find some coverage. A bit of a misroll. He's going to drop. B is going to be broken, though. Fire and ice. Oh, but just for a second, E United is able to answer back. It literally, it, this is going to come down to the wire, and exploits have to open up the door. Is he going to be able to? That's going to be one down. That's going to be two beautiful shots. Now going into an explosive. He's going to fall, and fire and ice back with the win condition. 15 seconds away, Fire and Ice, they're gonna wrap this one up. It looks like as well, they're already on the home LE United to go for that last second decap just to pour salt into the wound. They will tie this up going into the second half. Just a little bit, in my opinion, just a little too much over aggression. They need to pull it back. That's what E United has been winning with, has been forcing their opponents to make mistakes. Praise was trying to find where Exploits is and I don't blame him for trying to poke around, see if he can find anything. That's just not the that's not the case in that situation. You haven't fully gotten the B Hill under control because if you die, you now open up both side hallways to pince out the guy that you have capping the B Hill. Just gotta control that aggression a little bit better. Controlled aggression will always win you a fight a little bit more than ruthless aggression because you're just throwing punches at that point. None of them might be landing. Well done from exploits, man. Well done. Takes down three members in that neutral. Or at least gets two. I think he had some help with the Lance, but regardless, though, the end result is clearly the victory. You mentioned that aggression, right? Maybe United, they had some time. Maybe they could have played around with it, been a bit more passive, thought it through, but 
exploits does a great job. We're tied up two to two. That's two in a row for both teams, right? United started off hot with two. Fire Nice has answered back with two of themselves. Now we have a little bit more firepower. Cody's still gonna have that uh, that shock to be able to use, but we also have that retro that's going to be incredibly useful. Boltox. Shock's gonna be out. Dyslexia's is gonna find an angle. That's gonna be one down. Power's in the tough spot. He's also going to fall to the wayside. Now Explosive has been tagged up. Know where he's at. The question is, do they want to push forward? Well, Kenny, he's gonna try even things up a little bit up top, but fortunately is gonna have to back up for the time being, kind of formulate a plan or at least assist his teammates. Because right now, Fire and Ice hugely aggressive. They were pushing up. They wisely back off, but it got scary there for a second. Get scary. You're gonna see them push back up. I think three people are gonna play up top. Kenny's gonna go down. He's gonna be taken out here momentarily. E United needs to consolidate their resources. Praise goes for a, uh, an up A battle. Exploits up A'd him before he got up A. So that's, I mean, shout out Toy Soldier one time. Two members of Fire and Ice fall to Powers as explosive retro shots in, and then the easy one shot kill by Powers. Exploits waiting in the wings once again. This is that danger zone. He's just waiting and hiding. He hits the double shot. He gets the kill. Two rounds in a row. Exploits is sneaking multiple members of E United, helping give them that pressure back into the middle of that. Oh. My God, that trap. I mean, that reaction was beautiful. That shot. Hey, but Pickups there, Explosive back on his feet, still a 2v2. Explosive is down, Kenny's forced to go for the pickup, but Dyslexic is there for the down. Powers, though, from the top is managing to at least get one trade, but the end result is Fire and Ice continually able to get the neutral, putting them in control of the 2-1, to one, and that much closer to the win condition of 250. Cody we'll playing around with Praise a little bit, big 1v1, nice shots. Praise, though, able to hit and connect on the one that's most critical, ends up dropping him. This is where E-United has found themselves being overly aggressive at times, especially in this portion of the game. But honestly, they have to be right now because they know the 2-1 to one might not be enough to give them the win condition. We'll find out very shortly, and it's not. So they need to get the decap on D. Kenny has to be careful here. If he dies, he allows for the breakthrough. His job is now to try to delay these two players from Fire and Ice. Look at Dyslexic. He's going to get Lancer out in the back by, I believe, Explosive. Beautiful job there to try to get that down. Back A comes out. Kenny and Explosive get one. Kenny's going to break through. He's going to go for the hill because that's two dead. Now you see Exploits trying to push out, trying to make something happen. Already in the hill. E United, they're trying to mount this up. Exploits gets one. He's leaving. He's off the scene. Back into the E hill he goes. It's going to be a 16-point differential to try to stop this retake. They leave Kenny by himself in the hill. This is not what you need to do. I know you got to stop E, but... Powers is in the 1v1. Kenny's been left to his own devices, and I don't believe it's going to be enough. There's the kill. Powers will hop. Nobody's going to drop. You're going to see them get back into it, trying to stop. Good double shot down to help secure the E take. They get the win condition back. This is huge. This like can't do this. No way. You he, had, he had to. I mean, he had no other choice. I mean, oh, he had, had no, no choice. other choice. Wow. 250 to 248. You talk about coming down to a knife's edge. Very well done from E United. Got a bit shaky, but they made it happen. And, uh, you know, I mentioned it. They needed to get the decap on the home hill of FNI. They managed to do that. Exploits did everything in his power to try and keep that win condition in the favor of FNI. It's just a hair away from getting the cap on the neutral. He got pressured up. Not a lot he could do, but back off. If he sticks it, fine. But it still wasn't going to be enough time to lock it in at the 250. They were too far away. But, hey. Very well played, I would think, uh, I would say through and through between both rosters. It is a competitive map after all, and, and this is something that we expected. This is a must win from EU United. I say that they can win map number two on Asylum, but at least right now, I'm thinking it's a must win. Bray's doing a great job, 14 and five, 14 deaths. Dyslexic though, 16 and six. He only has 12 deaths to his name. You're seeing some players really start to rise up as you would typically expect, but this is an important round for Fire and Ice. Tie it up three to three. United, once they get that 4-2 mark, wrap it up. It's GG. Power is trying to play up against the Dyslexic. He's going to get that flash. He might try to push it. Oh, he does. It is like... Wow. God, the up page is too strong right there. Even with that first shot on by Powers, he couldn't get the chunk with that player sliding into the cover corner. Even with the title update for Operation 6, that's one of the things they openly admitted to working on is, is trying to have better shot tracking for players sliding into the corner. But Powers, I mean, just not enough. He got hit with 
I mean, a, a basically a small nuclear missile right there to get killed off. Kenny is going to try to go across the top. Toadie's going to get caught out behind that cover. They're going to get him down. Here comes Powers off of the races to try to help his teammates exploit. Going into the hill, he's going to head down at Kenny. Kenny's going to try to bounce around. He's going to get taken down. Now you see Dyslexic joining the fight. Explosive will have a down, but he's going to be flashed out. That's two deaths. This is where I expect the United to get off the scene. They got to go back up top, play defense, maybe down low to hold off the E push. Unsure, they're both down low. They're, they might be trying to cover out and, and pressure anybody that gets into the E hill. This is going to be pretty interesting to me. It's going to be Exploits getting in there first. They're actually waiting to try to sneak one. Powers gets one shot on a Dyslexic. Can't get the second to go. Here comes the flash. Powers backs up. He's got Kenny with him. Dyslexic bounces up. Double bounce in the back A. Won't get him anything. Beersley's right here with him. Long range flash out of Kenny. Kenny trying to find one. Praised on the flank. Powers finds that last down shot. And Taylor, it is off to the races once again for E United. Powers has to be careful. Exploits. Three rounds in a row. Finds somebody slipping and gets another one. Oh, and Dyslexic as well. It looks as if E United pulls off these great plays. And they they are great plays, but uh, whether it be dyslexic, more specifically exploits, who has just been, I mean, he has been lights out. You talk about consistency through and through. Anytime I see him in a tough spot or in an engagement, more often than not, he's picking up the elimination, and that's all you could ask for him on the roster of Fire and Ice. Dyslexic is the cherry on top. Explosive, forced to go up top, but the pressure is real. They know he's weak, but he's managed to gain back his health, and now he's being joined by power. So this push is going to mean quite a bit for E United. If they lose it, it's pretty much GG. If they win it, there's a chance. Down low, nobody's gotten to the E hill yet. There might be three people up here. No, player number nine is going to be down low. Kenny's going to be down low. Powers is going to go down right there. Shock is out to block them from the hill. They have to take the long way into the backside of the spawn. Toadie's going to have good shots on to Kenny as well. That's 3-3. Three, three. That's tied up. Beautiful round by Fire and Ice once again. I mean, my hat's off to exploits. I've got to give him the the MVP for this map one so far. Every time Absolutely. Fire and Ice has needed a big kill, needed somebody to find somebody slipping and be able to slow down a push or stop a retake, it has been him. He is the sole reason, if you ask me, that this thing is tied up around number seven. Oh, I 100% agree. And, and that comes to show you that stats isn't necessarily everything. You can look at dyslexic stats, right? He's leading the charge. He's got 21 kills. Uh, no one's even close to him as of yet. Even death-wise, his KDA, it's through the roof, right? But it's about Exploit's ability to be able to make key plays when they matter most and keep F and I in the round. That is what is critical. And that's a good example, at least to myself, that comes to show like sometimes, you know, just because you have a high KD doesn't, make your, doesn't mean you're making high impact plays. Exploit's a great example as to what high impact plays could be. We're all tied up 3-3. Three, three, and again, that was a very important round, keeping E United off of that, uh, you know, that coveted round four win and that much closer to winning the map. So at this point, it's still anybody's ball game. We're going to be at a standstill once again. So someone makes the first move. All the way to a slowdown, just a creepy crawl. Make sure you seem to make that first push. Powers is going to get pushed back. Get the fire coming out for both teams. Explosive. Still not giving up that retro. They haven't gone for that second utility, and those are the reasons why. Like I said, it's a one-time use for most of those utility grenades. With that retro, Explosive can continue to apply pressure, continue to get shots out. Kenny tries to trap Beersley with shock and get a kill onto him again. Playing that top side a little bit more defensively than normal. His job is to keep that extra rotational pressure out. Dyslexic has a first shot. One of the scariest things about Exhibit is how, I mean, dark some of the corners are. It just makes your life so much harder to just try to be confident pushing up. And right now you're seeing the fruits of that in favor of Fire and Ice. They're able to wait around corners. They're able to get extra shots on it. They're able to stop E United from getting into these positions and continue to pressure the triple caps. Oh, great movement from Kenny to bait Fearsley into the Nasher, take him down. And he's just going to sprint as fast as he can now over to the other side. Player three is going to meet up with him for the time being. Exploits, clutch spot once again, staying up, maintaining his life. And now Fire and Ice knows the pressure is on. E United trying to take the neutral. Exploits tries to jump over cover. He gets taken down. Toady as well. Dyslexic now, he's going to be gone. And E United now back in the driver's seat. But more importantly, with three members being eliminated, Toady just off the respawn. E United has a decision to make. Push up or stay back and start to recover and just take the point lead. Starts with Fiercely. Fiercely has got power. If Toady drops here, E United, I think, is going to uh, continue to press forward. If, well, they can't really. They don't even have the numbers, do they? So at this point, though, anyways, Powers holding his own up here. If Toady drops, this is going to be big. 
this was about Powers delaying the inevitable up top in a 2v1. Sodi and Dyslexic, they're going to go across the top. They're going to try to apply pressure to E United's home hill. It's going to be up to Kenny. He's going to throw a shock out toward the E. Flash out. Both of those players have to rotate wide. They can't really go toward the home hill. He's just waiting now for Powers to come off a respawn, and he hits a whole brick as that flash goes off, and Powers knows it. Beautiful save by him. Two dead for Fire and Ice. They don't really have a leg to stand on late in this round. This should be four to three in favor of E United. And we will be one round away from finishing off map number one. But this just puts the pressure solely on Fire and Ice to win this next round. It's going to be interesting to see how they play it. If they go for the early pressure, if they win an early initial, or go for a gunfight somewhere other than just down low. And I'd like to see them give some help to Fearsley because I think Fearsley. If he gets any help up top, they can pressure Kenny. Kenny has really played that top fight pretty much picture perfect since the start of the map. He really has, you know, and, and again, I go back to when F and I played at United in Pro League. Fearsley was, I mean, he had Kenny's number. Like, there was just no comparison. There's no competition. But Kenny has truly improved. And uh, I, I say that lightly because Kenny has always been a top player. You know, support role, slayer role, really whatever he needs to be. But Fearsley has always been able to beat him. But tonight, not not the case. Fearsley is just having a hard, hard time. And you can see that 7 and 9 with 14 deaths to Kenny, who's 12 and 7 and 13. And most of those, if not all of those kills, are purely on Fearsley. Maybe another player from FNI who decides to rotate up. So big round for Fire and Ice to send it to a round 9. But the shocks are out of the way. But truthfully, they haven't really been that impactful. So I expect the fight to be just the same. Raised with a lot of shots there early on to Dyslexic. They need a good shot on him to get that chunk. But once again, over aggression, somebody waiting in the wings. Gets that down, gets that easy chunk onto somebody. Praised is now caught between a rock and a hard place at the home hill of Fire and Ice. He's going to try to find anybody anywhere, and he cannot do it. This is just unbelievable. They go down once again, and Fire and Ice will have this initial, and they'll have control over the map. That's pretty much been the tell of the tape, I think, for the majority of this map. Fire and Ice, again, strong initials, looking looking good, but United always finds a way to kind of adapt to what oh, FNI throws at them. Kenny, delaying time, coming through, just forcing it Fire and Ice to rotate back. That gives time for Powers to get onto E. And if he doesn't get the full cap, it forces Fire and Ice to react. It forces them to act, right, to retake control. It's a, it, it is truly a battle of attrition, a battle of power control. And the United is doing what they need to do to force FNI to act because you know they're not going to just stay with the scoreline as it is. Even though FNI has to lead, they see an opportunity, they're going to take it. So Kenny takes down exploits up top now and he's going to continue to OE. I'm telling you, Kenny has been instrumental in the success of the United here so Whoa! far. But Dyslexic connects from downtown all the way up and takes him out. I know he wasn't expecting that because I wasn't either. No way you could have been expecting that. Dyslexic threw that from downtown, got that insta give. You see them pressuring toward Powers on the right side. Not going to be able to do anything just yet. There's the double answer. There's a down. They're not going to be able to get either of these kills just yet. They're going to continue to pressure up, though. There's the third down and out. Exploits has to pull out his snub. He's going to try to turn around and return fire. Flash out. Here comes the push. Powers goes toward E. He's going to try to get into that middle hill, try to get that break, but he actually slides on through to continue to pressure up on a toady and dyslexic. Kenny's joined the fight now. All four members of E United are down low. Nobody has the pressure on E United's home either. Powers is waiting for exploits. He was trying to pull the exploits on exploits, but the. Uh, can't let that get. That's a beautiful win can, by Fire and Ice. Oh, yeah, without question. And uh, again, an important round, given the fact that they need this to stay alive and potentially take map number one. But even after this round, still, you have round number nine. And the way that it's been going, who knows? It is literally anybody's ball game. Exploits needs to stop this OE. One hill is all it takes. And, uh, Explosive is really going for it. Head down straight into Explosive. Good shot onto one. Tries to go in for the second. It's a couple more pellets. Does have help, though. Oh, Exploits holds his own. No, it still gets the chunk. Ring around the Rosie. We're heading into round nine. You'll love to see it. Round number nine and map number one. And E United, man, this has been the tale of them getting snuck. I'm, I'm sorry. There's no other way to put it. Exploits continues to find kills. Toady found one. That last round where Toadie was watching them just chase Dyslexic. And 
they couldn't do anything about it because as Tony just peeked the corner, it was a one hit a quit on to Powers, and now Praise basically has to stare at his feet, drop a flash, and hope he gets a stun on somebody to try to get an easy chunk, and nobody falls for it. It's going to be a fantastic next fight because E United, they're going to hover over that mark, so I don't know if they're going to add, they're going to add ammo. What are they going to do this? Way? Maybe put something up top for Kenny to try to place. Okay, Mark, so. Oh, they're just going to add ammo to the Mark, so. Okay, so it's going to go to that 100 seconds. It's going to have those 32 rounds. Going to be an absolute we fantastic fight, though, because, ass. again, Explosive right. has yet to give up that retro. So he is banking on the fact he's going to be able to help people around the map and help get those early downs and damage. If I'm a United, though, you get one kill, settle up. Just force them to come off a respawn. Don't allow somebody to just wait in the corner and get an easy kill on you. I think that's fair advice. If there's any time for Fearsley to step it up and stop getting I ran through one. from Kenny, this is the round to do it. You shut Kenny down, it's going to hurt E United's chances of winning because he is, again, he has been so instrumental in the success of E United. Wow. Fearsley connects onto Explosive, and now he's going to pressure in onto Kenny, and I know Explosive wasn't predicting that as well. Shock is going to shut down Kenny. That's not a bad usage, but he gets away with the marks, and that's going to make Fearsley's job that much harder. But Fire and Ice is going to manage to take the neutral, and uh, again, they've been doing that, but they're not going to stop there. They're going to continually push forward. The Shock is forcing at least one choke point out. Looks like they're going to go in and back off. I thought for sure they were going to commit, but fair enough. You don't have to commit as much, especially when you have the neutral. Now it's up to United to make a move. Nobody's down just yet. Kenny's going to roll back. Fears he's going to be checking him. Human spotted! Mark's up top, and, and that's just going to be a bit of a, an advantage, in my opinion, for Kenny. Now Fears he's truly stuck. The double Lancer on the power is beautiful. We just saw... We saw that a few maps ago where Fire and Ice had three Lancers holding down the foundations. And they were able to just hold off everybody in them. Mama trying to get back to that get mm. back to that hill. They get back the E hill quite succinctly, less than 50 seconds. Fearsley's gonna get double lancered up top. He's gonna go down. Good little rotational flank by Praise. Whoa there, Kenny. Almost <laughs> lost your head to them lasers, buddy. That could have been close. And definitely, yeah, I mean, that would have been tragic, truly tragic. Fire and Ice put themselves in a winning position, but again, closing out sometimes where they struggle. And for E United, they do not struggle, nor do they hesitate to take the win condition back. Unfortunately for Explosive and Kenny, they end up falling in a critical time. So F and I looking to retake control. Dyslexic gets a nice shot into powers. D and E locked back in place. That's the two to one. It's going to make E United's job that much more harder, if not impossible. They only have 20 seconds to flip the script. <laughs> Lexic waiting on that corner. He's trying to catch somebody once again. The old Fire and Ice special on it on exhibit. He gets hit the first shot, but I mean he turns and, and burns. Gets that kill there on the praise. And still a chance. There's a chance, but mm, the shot down that basically makes it impossible. Kenny right. can't take the long route in. He's gonna get taken down. Here comes Explosive. Gets the one hit of Quitta, but Lancer once again. No shot. No way. No how. Round number nine put down by Fire and Ice on the backs of some beautiful team fire. A little bit of a defensive hey, stand there in the final waning seconds. Man, tough break. Such, or really, I would say so well played from Kenny. I really just for the whole, uh, I think, the crew of E United. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they take the loss in the end. Fire and Ice, you know, teamwork wise, I, I think they're solid, but. E United have much better teamwork there, and I think much better strategy overall. But fire, well, I'll let you touch on that actually because you're talking about the over aggression. I think that's still a point that you need to break down a little bit further. But I'm going to give Fire and Ice clearly. And we've been saying it all round. Exploits was just the biggest playmaker. Again, Dyslexic had the biggest stat line KDA wise column, but Exploits was just always there, making it count for his team. And uh, man, I'm just. So incredibly impressed with them. But other than exploits, I know we can touch on that all day. Talking about E United, what was their undoing in the end? Because it seemed as if they had the advantage and honestly the composure to be able to win this map, but they ended up falling short. Information is everything. Knowledge is truly power. I know that some might say that power is power, but knowledge, most tense in cases, is will help get you the victory. Exploits in that map, he exploited the fact, all pun intended, that E United kept losing numbers. The, it, the communication might not have been 
up to snuff might not have been on par with what they're used to because Exploits would be hiding in this corner, Toady would be hiding in that corner. What you need to be concerned with, like right here, Dyslexic, he gets that first shot on because he's just waiting for somebody. They're baiting out Exploits shooting over that cover because Dyslexic is going to hold that cubby. And as soon as somebody comes through to try to pressure up onto Dyslexic, he's just going to step out and get the one hit of Quitta. They need to fix, going into maps two and three, that intel situation. Um, one of the things, I Oof. mean, you can't. There's not, you can't stop that. There's nothing to do about <laughs> that. That is just but nasty. Like, how many times in that map did we, especially my my biggest point going into Asylum, think about this, Reflections. If you're playing a 4v4 game and you know where maybe two people are and then you find mm. a third person and that third person doesn't engage the fight, he runs you halfway across the earth. I mean, he hits the button like the flash and tries to get time to go backwards. I mean, he is gone. If you don't know where that fourth person is, should you full and well chase out that kill? Is that really that necessary to chase him? Because he's not in a position to fire back at you. He's not stopping to engage the fight. He's just running. And those right. are those are mistakes I don't expect the United to make again or come this weekend. Because they chased him. Powers and Praise chased Dyslexic all the way across from Ocean, all the way through the spawn, into the Locust exhibit. I mean, it is halfway across the map. For Toadie to literally peek the corner like the boogeyman and one-shot chunk Powers, and now Praise finds himself in a 2v1. Those are the little things, the little mistakes that cost you rounds, that cost you retakes. Those have got to get cleaned up as good as the United played Tuesday, Wednesday, and the, for the start of this tournament up until now, those things don't happen. First map yeah. against Fire and Ice, they happen 5-4 round 9. I mean, granted, it's 5-4 round 9, and, and you can be like, oh, well, they clean up one of those rounds. They win it 5-3. You clean up one of those. Well, they didn't. Ifs and buts were candies and nuts. We'd all have a Merry Christmas. you got to do it going forward. You've got to be better about information because I guarantee you Fire and Ice, they're going to try to sneak you again. They're not going to – they are not – they're in this to win it, all right? They're not in this to make friends. This ain't show friends. This is show business. And they got mm. money on the line. They got a back-to-back -back championship in E-Days on the line. They're not going to come out here and play fair and square up. They're going to try to find any and every way they can to get the kills, the hills, the rounds, the game, the maps, whatever you want to say. And that, I just think going forward, that's what you got to clean up, communication. Fair enough. And, you know, it's surprising to think that communication might be – the undoing, but it's even something that Ash has pointed out in the commentary at, at, at certain points. I specifically remember on Harbor when uh, United was playing against Rise, and he was saying, you know, I can clearly tell right now with the positioning, how United is playing. They're not on the same page. Their communication, it's jumbled up. Someone needs to bring them back on the same page. Silence comes and just call out the critical information. Maybe that's the case, right? Obviously, Ashes knows what's going on. He knows them intimately. He's been playing or at least uh, competing with them and, and coaching them for, for basically ever until his retirement. But regardless, though, E United, talented roster, and they have really shown me tonight how powerful they can be, especially heading into mid-split playoffs. But my only concern, and I go back to what you said, you don't think, I don't know if you meant it this way, but I think you said, you know, you don't think we see during the midst of playoff, they'll make the mistakes that they made the night chasing dyslexic as far as they did. But this is something that you have been saying for a couple of weeks now with the United. What makes you think it's going to change mid split playoffs? Just because the pressure and the money's there doesn't mean the competition's going to be any less. And it doesn't mean that your emotions or at least you can't get carried away with over aggression, right? Especially if you feel like you have the edge when the adrenaline's flowing, you're just going to push some things. Well, why are you so confident that's not going to happen during midst with playoffs? Because history repeats itself if you don't learn from it. E United from the start of Pro League being out of position and over aggression. They start to trickle in some wins because they start setting up, they start placing weapons down, they start rotating, they start to get their record looking a little bit better. Okay, well now they're losing defensive stands and they're not rotating and helping each other. Look at their matches just tonight. Rotated around, helped each other on Vascar, got into the middle of the lane, used parts of the maps you're not used to seeing. Kenny and Explosive and Rubik's. I'll give Rubik's their coach a lot of credit. He's a smart sure. coach. He comes from a team across the pond and EU's finest that was, I mean, well-versed in setups and defense and, and maybe not the best in small talk, 
but that's the kind of thing that Kenny and Explosive can work on now. If their issue in map one was small talk, having the information, having the call outs of where everybody is on the map so that they know what they might be running into, you best believe on Asylum, if they lose, it's going to be because Fire and Ice, Fire and Ice are going to have to beat them. They are not going to sneak as many kills in map two because I guarantee you the small talk is going to be there. The marks are going to be there. If you could be in the comms, it's probably going to sound a lot like it. And with explosive-led teams, a lot of the times he's the only one talking. I guarantee you're going to have somebody else talking. But you're going to have these little commands coming out from everybody where powers will come off spawn and, and front spawn. Maybe Praise will take front spawn as they move to Asylum because they want him um, They want him to rotate down to the uh, train tracks and probably take that fight down there. Sure. What you're probably going to hear is some along those lines. I got one. Okay, let's push mid. All right, there's two up top as well. All right, we're going to get this kill here. All right, he's down. We got marks. All right, now there's one left. Okay, he's down. Now let's move. We got one more left on train tracks. It's going to be these little consolidated team speak type mentalities where it's just going to be one barrier after the next. What Fire and Ice is going to have to do, other than torch our time right now, is they're going to have to play with a little bit of aggression, I think. That's how you match that kind of methodical gameplay that's probably going to come out from E United right now. E United are going to play like they were Sun Tzu right in the art of war in map number two. The mm. best way to counter that kind of methodical gameplay, trying to see your opponent's movements come out from ahead of you, is you're going to have to push somebody. Throw that flash a little bit earlier than they expect and make that move before that first train comes. Try to butt heads with them. Try to get them off of their marker. It's the best way to counteract that. This next map, I think, is going to be just as good, if not better, than map number one. It, I, I really hope so, because even transitioning from map one to map two, you mentioned the small little mistakes from United. They can already clean up those mistakes heading into the second map on Asylum. We just got to wait for Toadie, and hopefully Toadie gets into the mix. Toto lost his dog. Hopefully he finds him once again, and then we'll be getting ready to get started. But it is going to be a fun one. But we did talk about this. I want to bring this back up, right? We talked about how exhibit was almost not necessarily i hate to say it because it sounds so generic it really is but you know a must win for for e united what i mean truthfully you know heading into asylum for fire and ice against eu who do you think this is going to especially based off of map number one i know it was back and forth neck and neck came down to round nine but we talked about asylum being you know a heavy favor for f and i do you still stand behind that well f and i also leads leads the league in initials one on on asylum according to my notes that's what i started trying to flip through because i have a little thing where i notate i've explained it to blaze i don't know if you and i have the same opinion of excuse me of what an initial means but basically long story short once i get to the 100 point marker for both teams or once i get a team to a 100 point marker I also have to check to see if they've still got more members alive, if they've got more teammates alive, if they have a power weapon or something along those sorts. So a retake won't happen, but it's basically if you've got the 100 points and you've got a solidified two-to-one hill set up or a defensive stand, and then I kind of award you that initial in my own notes. Fire and Ice leads Asylum on initials, A, because they've played it the most, so they have more chances to win in the initials, but B... They do things like we saw them do against Pittsburgh Knights where they push up, they get into the E-Hill with the smokes, they get that initial cap, which gives them the extra points. The thing that I think is going to separate Pittsburgh Knights and, and E-United in this is I think E-United is going to push up into the smoke as well. They have a guy. They have guys like Powers that aren't a play, aren't afraid to play in that dead space. That are, aren't afraid to try to look for that little bit of shadow movement. Even if Powers doesn't have a smoke, Powers more than likely have a flash. It's just a fact he will more than likely have a flash grenade in his back pocket. Sure. So when you see somebody like Exploits throw that flash to up a that corner on his right hand to try to get into the side of the D hill, I guarantee you you're going to hear a flash go off a few seconds later. And if he gets an X, Powers will be in the smoke waiting and watching for whoever is there trying to catch somebody even if it's just a mark even if all he's doing is doing that pop shot l trigger for a mark he gets the mark he gets the shot on it's going to be even better for them to try to get that damage out those are the things that we're going to have to take note of in the second half in the first half i think you're going to see a lot more pushes through mid split through that uh bat cave as i call it where that tombstone is this is going to be a chess match for me. And the first couple of rounds are going to tell me exactly what who's going to have the upper hand, even going into the second half. Because like I said, if Fire and Ice can't get a little aggressive and can't win early rounds by being a little aggressive, because E United is playing so methodical and calling everybody out, let's not forget, as good as Fire and Ice is on Asylum, I think 
if, if memory serves me correctly, this is the map that won them the dream tournament in that summer online major with Powers and Kenny and Praise and Explosive on the same team. Granted, mental ain't walking through those doors coming out of that locker room, but now it's 4v4. You don't have to worry about the fifth guy on the other team either. Right. They went sure. to Asylum against a very, very game quarantine team. It went to round nine, but they come out with a win. And Powers, I think, it dropped like 23-24 in the first three or four rounds. So this is this really should be a fantastic match. Well, you went way back in, in, in the past, right? And you really I, dug deep how, into the I'm archives. I'm an idiot, okay? I do No, that. you're not. No, I'm not saying I'm you're an idiot. archaeologist. <laughs> You're an, okay, an archaeologist. Fair enough. You're digging up the bones and you know the fossils, and that was one one of those fossils, right? But let's bring it back to what just happened tonight, Colin. You know, United played against Rebel, and Asylum was map number three. It went to round nine, very very close. It was hips. I, I think we caught like the the tail end of it, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it was like 200 to 200 something like that. I don't know if the domination came in or if it was 250 to 200, but it was very close. You wouldn't put Rebel and Fire and Ice in the same wheelhouse. Like, you just wouldn't. There's no disrespect to Rebel. It's really not. But Fire and Ice has just been a much better team through and through as, you know, Latin American team. There's an argument who's the better team in Latin America. Is it Pittsburgh Knights? Is it Fire and Ice? I think it's uh, any given Sunday. You know, that's bottom line what it comes down to. But whenever it comes down to that first matchup, though, for E United going to round nine of, uh, you know, round nine Asylum, against Rebel for United. What does that say heading in to Asylum, the same map, but playing a much more difficult team who I would say is much more well-rounded than you even said is one of the best teams initially whenever it comes to Asylum off of those initials. Identives is three-piece. Cracks two-piece on the train tracks to go from home to home. Those are things that helped it get to around nine. Those are also mistakes, again, I don't think you're going to see E United be giving up because those were on plays where they got over aggressive. They lost identities around the corner. I, I talked, I, I had a soliloquy. I basically wrote you a book and a half on it saying how I think they're going to play very methodical. And I expect that kind of to happen again. I expect okay. that methodical gameplay. So I, even though I wouldn't put rebel and fire and ice in the same breath right now and how, how good they're playing, I would kind of say that it's going to give you similar takes where Fire and Ice are going to be able to get kind of aggressive in certain areas. You've got dyslexic and exploits. You can't tell me you're not going to let them get aggressive top side of the map. You're not going to let them right. get a little mixy toward the middle. They're not going to try to get into a fight early and try to make somebody miss. So you're going to see some of the things kind of be the same. What you're finally going to see is Toady take his position. Finally, there. man. I swear for Lord, man, you thought he got lost in Kansas. That's why it's a flyover right. state, Toady. Get out of it. I'm about to lose my mind, man. If Toadie didn't get back in here, man. Toadie, Toadie's here, though. I, I mean, and again, nobody I wants to he... hear me talk, so I, I trust me, oh, I'm trying the, to the... shut up. Everybody man, did. I did. You know, when, when it comes to the podcast, brother, you already know, no one's a fan of it. Like, everybody's always like, why aren't these guys starting the match, man? Push the button. Hey, I look. I need my button. I need my button. I, I just need Toady. I, I mean, bottom line, <laughs> can Toady just join up? United's got it together. They're all here, four strong. Where's fire and ice? Okay, get your man together. You just won map number one, and you're telling me you're not anxious to go into map number two? I mean, Weird. that had Whatever. to be... Look, Tony might have been holding it since round four as well. I mean, he might have been might have been hauling to the bathroom, my man. Looking like the train conductor <laughs> trying to get to that bathroom right now. That's there. why... Well, worst time for that to happen is to send it to round nine, right? <laughs> to have one of the longest exhibits take place when you got to go to the bathroom. Whew, tough break. Let's get it started, Colin. Hey tracks fight you mentioned the initials when it comes to fire and ice they're pretty much unstoppable but kenny's angry kenny was in chat he was talking it up man and he's like i, I hate the weight i really do it's just as much as you guys and he starts that off strong along with explosive it's not even really a, um, an angry kenny that's a that's a wrinkle they sent all four players mid or bottom side of the map because they knew their home hill was already capped they gave up the home to home stretch to fire and ice dyslexic gets over there and gets the quick re decap and retake but now you see United has to backtrack. They have to try to get dyslexic killed. There's the triple cap just sounding through, but United's going to be able to fight off a map. They're going to let dyslexic bleed out, which is what they need to do. It's going to be 4v3 on the map. They need to push up very quickly to not let dyslexic get down here to maybe help out. Raze is going to get first shot on. Uh oh, I do have a worry, though. I have my first worry of map number two for E United, man. What's that? Taylor, uh, my main man, Praise, is not playing classic Dom. He's playing commando Dom. And I think Praise is just a, he's on a different power level if he's classic Dom. I don't, I don't know. 
It worries me. It worries hey, me. I'm about to say right there, man, you shouldn't be worried with how he just pulled that off. As you're bringing up your worry, he's slaying out fire and ice. Hey, I'm also liking, I, I just like the whole vibe he's got going on with the purple skins. I think, is everybody on the EU rocking the purple skins? A few weeks ago, they were actually rocking the USA skins, you know, United Red, White, and Blue. These are the motherboard skins, by the way. Um, that's the skin they're actually using, that purple skin is the motherboard skin. Kenny is not. Kenny is definitely not rocking that skin. I think he's using the Team Crystal set, which is uh, 60,000 coins in the store. He's got the Charmed Nasher. So he's flexing. The same. He is, he's flexing. Charmed Nasher from last week's event, in the event playlist and the uh, Team Crystal set. Close right there with the uh, Phantom Nasher. No idea how we got that early, by the way. <laughs> okay, a little wink. I can, I can hear the wink, which you would think would be impossible. It's weird. I, I feel like EU United has absolutely been having to leg up here. In the engagements that I'm seeing, I'm, I'm looking at them get, to me, a more success rate in these fights than Fire and Ice, yet the score doesn't reflect that at all. Doesn't reflect it at all, as you said. Explosive, another, sh another down. They're gonna have V-cap, V-D-cap. They might get the win condition off of this. It's three v or two v four on that map, on the side of the map. Dyslexic is gonna try to go underneath. They're gonna have a two v one up top, but they're gonna bounce back. This is gonna be a really weird secondary retake by Fire and Ice. Explosive's job is probably to keep eyes on Dyslexic. Now they've moved Praised into that position. They might go for the flank on him to try to make it impossible for them to win this next retake. Explosive, two big shots, the misroll, the down. They're going to give up B, but they're going to have to kill in the middle of the map. They're going to have both kills in the middle of the map. E United have to get over to C to try to stop it because they got a 2v, 2v1 on both sides. Kenny has some damage on. He's going to be full ready. He's going to go down around the backside. They have to win B, which they do. They win B. This might give them the win condition, especially with that knee cap the home hill. Oh my god, doesn't even matter. Explosive shuts him down and sits him down. I will say that was probably one of the most objectively heavy asylums that I've had a chance to cast. And even so, well, hold up. Dyslexic does get a break short lived, but uh, that could have swung the win condition over towards F and I. But at the end of the day, a very close round to start off this asylum map, map number two, a must win for E United to send it to map number three. But again, objectively, that was just phenomenally played. Fire and Ice is rotating nonstop. United, much the same. And it didn't necessarily come down to just slaying, uh, like, you know, what I typically talk about, I albeit outside of that final push that United made with winning the fight on Charlie, winning the fight on tracks. But more so, it was just about reallocating numbers. And whatever team did that better was the victory in the end. And for a long time, it was actually fire and ice. So well done for e United to be able to swing the win condition back in their favor towards the end and take uh, round number one. Multox are going to be placed out by both teams. Once again, we'll come here to the second round and see if E United can match the same aggression they did in the first, the first round. They did a beautiful job of that over-aggression. Going through the middle of the map, getting that initial down, and then even though giving up the home-to-home -home stretch to Dyslexic, they were able solidify those hills. This time they go with the standard. They go 2-1-1 here. Everybody's going to be stacked up. Lancers out across the middle of the map. Nobody's going to be able to push up just yet and be able to get that. Oh, wait a minute. Toady is down. And Praise is going to try to fly at him. They throw the flash, so they lose a, they use a, they lose a utility grenade, but they get the B-Hill. That's a beautiful win. They still have all four players up. Exploits might try to pressure onto Praise. Praise will have his health back. He's trying to get over to Kenny to try to get him a little bit of a uh, help. All you got to do is be able to get close enough to your teammate for him to get some quick revive off onto you, and now you're safe. Now Exploits has to wait. Oh, Exploits is cut off, but they don't know. That's that's not a mistake. That's just uh, uh, not exactly as heads up as I thought they might be right here. Even so, a United has a decent lead so far. Toadie inching his way closer. Fiercely as well, trying to make a break for it. A lot being committed. 3v2. Praise bit of a miss roll. Lancer down. He's gone. Exploits gets to clean up. He is going to be locked in for fire and ice. Kenny Force on a uh, tough engagement. 1v2 as F and I decides to back off, though. That's going to be some good snub action. Power is going to be challenged. Toadie gets a bit aggressive there. No reason to pressure up like that other than just to isolate Kenny, but a 3v2 would have been much better than this 2v1. Kenny, though, still will drop off. The back train's going to move forward. F and I now looking to potentially close out this round. Player three is gone. Four now is going to be the only one standing in their way as they start to inch closer to Charlie. Elizabeth 
inside the home hill is down. They're going to be pressuring up yet again. Powers is going to try to go for that up A, but to no avail. Kenny might be the last one alive, and he will be the last one dead for this round. Is Fire and Ice answer right back? And like you said, I, I think I think now you might be able to chalk it up to a little bit of a, uh, a mistake where they didn't pressure up that player. They got cut off by the front train and get another kill to try to set them back and not allow their retake to come through. Raised, another Visceral comes through and then gives up a kill to Fire and Ice. So this is going to be... This is going to be interesting to me going forward as, as you'll see both teams trying to play to their strengths, play to their advantages, and Fire and Ice is clearly the aggression game. They clearly are playing yep. up and playing in the faces of United whenever they get a chance. And they've always been that way against any team. They've never really tried to change it up. It's kind of like VQ, right? VQ during Split 1 was just that in-your-face aggression team. But they also had the composure to be able to back off. They had everything. That's why they were able to win the championship and Pro League, right? Because they were just a mixed bag and they kind of mastered all elements. But Fire and Ice is purely in-your-face aggression team. And uh, they never let off the gas without question. But uh, somehow it never bites them in the butt. Like, uh, sometimes maybe, but great push from Explosive onto Dyslexic. And uh, one more still to deal with. Fiercely, though, hits a nice stun and will at least pressure him back. Still two uh, members of e United going to be on streets for the pressure. F and I now can afford to reallocate their members onto the flank of e United, which they are going to be peppered a little bit. Forced to back off. Front train's coming in, and two members from F and I are going to go ahead and relocate. One will stay in Pavilion, but the push is there. They can't wait off. Kenny's going to be pressured at first onto Toady. Boltok is hitting, and that's going to give some help to Kenny to maybe push in, slide in, and get those, or excuse me, get the final damage that he needs to get the kill. But either way, man, they're starting to fall apart. Kenny and Praise are going to be down. Explosive as well. Powers is gone. And that's three out of the way. Fire and Ice once again pressuring in for that domination. He killed Explosive in the middle of the map, not allowing him to get that 90 degree angle. That's huge. Fire and Ice will win back-to-back -back rounds. And as you said, usually the team just went first blood to win back-to-back, -back, have a much better chance of winning the map. We're going to see if that continues to hold true as we go to the last round of the first half. We're not going to see anything crazy, I don't think. Even if it was 3-0 right here, I think you're still going to probably see some kind of utility grenade coming out from one team or the other. Yeah. Shocks or excuse me, retros first, and then you'll see the shocks or incense. A... Difference in strategy, if you ask me, for, for United. And, and right now, one of the things that they're struggling with is, is being able to help one another. They're not a, they're getting a little bit too 1v1 heavy. Interesting you say that, because I, I would like to pride United's teamwork, but of course, it does transfer from map to map, or maybe it doesn't transfer from map to map, excuse me, and definitely keep my eye on that. Maybe this is the case. Praise is pushing up by himself. So maybe you are correct. Like, Praise is in no man's land. Kenny is still way behind. Maybe it wasn't justified for him to push that. Powers is going to win a 1v in middle, but he's going to get Lancer down from up top because of the, the fact that they took the extra man out of the 1v up top. Praise goes down early. Powers wins a fight, but then when he tries to return and help Kenny out, he's in no position to help out. You see the 90 degree hmm. angle. Toady. With a Boltok, he has one more shot. All he can do. Oh Ooh. my God, what a headshot right there. He what? put Explosive down to 30% with that one shot. There's Praise once again by himself up top. Even though he's playing defensively and playing back, he's alone. He's on an island. Powers rotates up, trying to help out now. Snub out. Fearsley will go down. Powers is going to have to Thanos this thing and say, I'll do it myself at some points because that double kill starts to answer back and a little wrap from behind. Kenny will get that kill. They're going to solidify their home hill, but they're down almost doubled up in points, which is going to be hard for them to overtake momentarily. You're going to have to see them get back in a position to go for the flashes out and get into that beat. Hill. Previous couple of times they pressured up on the tracks. It just simply hasn't worked out. It is going to be a 3v3, and uh, Praise is once again going to push up by himself and really try and get that angle on a dyslexic. But I think that's justified. But Kenny is going to drop off. Tony's not going to be backing up. Praise not going to be by himself trying to get that finish on dyslexic. He's going to drop, pick back up. But they're just now starting to get the break. And uh, for Fire and Ice, they're reacting quickly. They send player nine over to Charlie. Keep that two to one, and that's going to continue to push them up. Big battle overhead. Kenny trying to get that damage in. Tony's going to be fairly weak, but still, though, you got to try and get the two to one. The win condition is in your hand, and Tony ends up dying, but Fire and Ice has a huge advantage here. And immediately now they're going to pressure in onto player three of Praise in that 2v1. And 
Should be able to Lancer him out unless Praise can pull out some heroics. But from the flank, though, he's going to be pressured up. Exploits is going to drop down. Dyslexic now is going to be forced to back up. He managed to get the decap. A still in control of Fire and Ice. It's going to be broken by player number four. A lot of objective work going down here. But honestly, United, this is their best chance to take the round. Cody is going to have to wait, and he did. He waited for respawns. He's coming back here. You see United didn't even get their home hill. They're basically waiting on mm. this step, though. Powers, no way he wanted to hop that cover. There's the flash out. Praise is going to try to bounce in and go for an up A. He's going to get taken down. Frustration central for E United. They're not playing the way they have been all night long. I thought they would wake up here in map number two, and it seems like they keep finding themselves left out on islands. Boy, shut it down. I mean... Doing exactly what he did in map number one to continue to get kills. Tough break for United, it truly is. And you know, we talked about winning two in a row. Obviously, put you ahead of the game. Talk about three in a row at this point. It's fire and ice is off to the race, is looking good. We're now moving into the second portion of the map, or excuse me, second half. We're going to have that streets fight. And obviously, you mentioned we're not going to see a center line weapon. We're most likely going to see the shocks and then the instants come through because just the value they provide for that entrance fight. But you did mention, to your credit, Colin, how strong the initials were for Fire and Ice, specifically on the first half. What are the chances on the second half, though, for E United? I mean, bad to worse because, e, again, Fire and Ice has won the most initials on Asylum, and, and part of that comes with the wrinkle that they've thrown at the Sea Hill, the way they play the Sea Hill early. Uh, the exploits, there's the smoke. The exploit throws the smoke. There he is into the hill. He's going to get marked out. He's going to have to sit down. And that's, that's another thing I talked about in the pregame. Taylor, I know you heard me. I said if they get a mark on those guys going to the smoke, you see Powers is right there where the smoke was. They're not afraid to get Pixie. They're not afraid to get into that fight. Powers in a tough spot. Snubbing out. Could get out of this potentially, depending. Big Chunk comes through. Toady, or should be dyslexic. We'll take down Powers, though. Brings down to a 3v2. Kenny will get the down onto one and the second. Hold up. And the third. Kenny putting the team on his back. And he's going to go in and extend his way over towards F. That front train is going to help. He's going to be able to get the break, the full break. Fire and Ice, you got to get a touch. Exploits will probably get a touch here. Kenny misses the shot, though. That's huge. That is a blunder for E United. You see Exploits no pressuring up. Rap shot FA will come out. He's going to be able to get that kill. And now you see the rest of E United trying to get a double shot down on Exploits. But I believe it is Toadie has snuck, snuck all the way over to the E hill. He's gotten the decap. I believe E United might have overstayed their welcome at the home hill of Fire and Ice. But Toadie, he's just going to try to continue to pressure those two players from E United. He's going to try to keep them down to damage. Kenny's inside of the entrance. Good first shot on. He's not going to be able to get this down just yet on a Toadie. But there's the snub action. He gets the shot out. Tony's down, Dyslexic's gonna go for this back end. He's got help from down low with a Lancer. Beautiful job, Fire and Ice. Their teamwork is coming through and it's shining colors. Oh, but the flank powers. from Powers, just too much to handle. This was Kenny getting a three-piece. Then it was Powers on the flank, and that puts the United back in the driver's seat and uh, potentially a domination coming through. Player one that will be isolated, so you might as well just let Fire and Ice come off the respawn and you know, force this next fight, this next engagement. And uh, for E United, they've got a decent sized lead. Fire and Ice will have to take one hill very quickly for the two to one if they want to try and keep the wind condition themselves. But most likely it's going to come down to them having to be on all three hills at the same time, at least getting a decap. And uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles at this point. So Fire and Ice, this is going to be their last push. First one's going to drop. That's going to be Praise. He's finished off. I see one. Utilizing that pavilion position. Not a big uh, push onto E is going to be here. Explosive needs to hold his own. Any trade they get is going to be big. That shot, the shock is massive, but even so, the decaps are going to come through on all ends. Fire and Ice is going in for the triple cap. Explosive is going to have to back off. Tony's going to be finished off. E United still has presence here. Exploits trying to hold his own here. Is it going to be enough? Will the win condition switch? Absolutely not. Exploits. He's going to manage to get the down on one. Kenny has to go big. Exploits can still make this happen. He's going to go in for the trade. Kenny gets it. That is big. And that should be the round for E United. Finally, I mean, that got hairy quickly. You see them get the D and the E hill back in their favor. It's only five seconds left. All that Kenny had to do was Lancer out. He's gonna just, I mean, throw his life away to the gods. D hill's not gonna be touched by anybody. It's too little, too late. Three, two. E United finds an answer, and it's off of the back of a flank from Powers, and that's the kind of thing that was winning uh, uh, Rebel rounds 
against the United earlier with the three right. pieces from Identibs. That's the kind of thing that was winning Fire and Ice rounds earlier with exploits, sneaking one, getting a second, the little missteps, the hop over the cover. That's never going to net you a kill. Just about when Powers gives up the two, ki the double kill to, I believe it was exploits inside of that gallery spawn. Just a very uh, different, a very different look for E United having to win rounds that way. I mean, turns out by both teams. I, I think this is where it's going to get interesting. Do you send explosive. Nobody moved out of spawn. What happened? Those two fire and ice players. Those two fire and ice players that were dancing around outside of that home hill. If, if they had stepped into that hill and reset the timer, even if it was once for jokes, I'm stepping in as the ref. Full DQ. <laughs> Call off the search. I don't even care. I don't even care what you do. The money goes back to goalie. <laughs> Just to goalie. Nobody else. It goes back to goalie. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'd have stepped in. It would have been over. But we are here. Round number six. Exploits trying to get into that E hill first. Once again, that's what I was talking about. They get the marks. They get a lot of damage out. They even get a down on him. They do use up their utility. So Fire and Ice are going to have to answer back with their own here momentarily. This is a little bit of... A misstep early by Fire and Ice, giving up that initial down. Now they've given up their utility as well. So that shock is going to go away here in the next few moments. And Explosive gets the kill in the middle of the map, which is going to give him the flank, maybe even the ability to Lancer out. But it will give E United the man advantage up top, and it's going to give them the down on Dyslexic. Beautiful start for E United. Phenomenal start indeed. Exploits. Ooh, fires a shot a bit too early. Exposes his position and powers will get away with his life. Still, though, he sticks it. So we'll try and maybe take this 1v2, but now he's about to get challenged, and he is down. Praise will remove him, and at this point, fire and ice. You got to stop with a lot of the individual plays. Band together as a team. That was working before, but the United's all up in your grill. You got to try and push them back. And e e United right now, they're right outside of the home hill. Powers gets another kill. Beersley is caught between a rock and a hard place. He throws the smoke to try to give him an exit, but he won't be able to find one. One player, V United, is down. It's going to be a 2v3 right outside of the home hill. Braze is there now, laying down brick after brick. Exploit, Little Miss roll out. That's going to be a kill for E United. They will tie this thing up 3-3. Three to three. Now it's a best of three as we go in around to 7, 8, and 9. And Taylor, one of the things that I got to say, Fire and Ice have to come up with a new wrinkle. They've gone back to that well one too many times, trying to get exploits to throw that smoke and get into the E-Hill. Explosive has his number. He gets the mark off. They get the downs and damage. And it forces Fire and Ice to kind of play back a little bit because you don't want to go down two or maybe even that third and final time. So in round number seven, Fire and Ice, let's see him do something different. Throw somebody toward Pavilion. Throw somebody down low. Try to get a 2v1 at the train tracks and force the United to make a move elsewhere on the bat because... That well, it's running a little dry. And I'd be, I think we'd be hard-pressed to assume Fire and Ice is going to continue with the same strategy. Let's go back to Foundation when they were playing against Pittsburgh Knights. And you remember them last round, round nine, making that audible to push Raver too strong through mid to battle for the frags and the long shot that was over there. I think they're going to switch it up here. And uh, I'm curious to see how they do so, but we're for sure not going to be seeing the same strategy, you would have to think. But... Either way, incense and shocks are going to be gathered up, and it uh, looks like Fire and Ice is going to be taking the first attempts. They at least get a, a hair away from getting the caps, but power's dropping. That's going to be big. Exploits now is going to be going in action. A shock is also going to be thrown. Is EU not going to throw their own? Yes, they will, but it missed. Oh, <laughs> exploit straight to the fire. He didn't expect that, but either way, Fire and Ice strikes first. They're able to get E, but now it's a 2v1, and player four explosive is also on the flank. Toady has to be careful. He goes for the up A. Real quick, I'm going to shout out E United for just a moment. Actually, I need to shout them both out. Fire and Ice, the wrinkle that they threw was the bait on exploits. They put him into the hill, but instead of putting him in entrance, he pulled right back, which forced Powers up because Powers thought he'd be able to have the same kind of shots, maybe even get the down like they did in the first couple of rounds. Instead, they get that down onto Powers. Oh my God, what a kill by Explosive. They get the down on Powers, so now E United plays back. Explosive throws the Incendiary behind, and I don't think anybody caught it. Nobody heard or saw where it landed. They throw it behind, and that's how they got that kill, is they threw the Incend, short, incend long, the Shock short, Exploits tries to hop the cover and get out of dodge right back into that fire and flame. So both teams having a great counter punch in this round. I'm really proud of both of them to throw those wrinkles in the mix. 
Scoreline's still very close. Fire Knights has an opportunity to tie it up and also bring it back, but not like that. Exploits will take the head off of Toadie. Not what was intended, but even so, the break is there. Still a 2v2, and uh, no one can really do anything. I don't, I don't agree with this. I, I don't know what he's doing in that moment. He just throws his life away. Dyslexic now is going to be forced into 1v2, and he's getting flanked, potentially getting flanked again, excuse me, because player one power is going to be down low, but... Even so, despite those mistakes, Fire Nice is still there. Dyslexic picks up a big elimination on Explosive. Prey's now forced back, and I can't believe Fire and Ice has been able to be successful in this push despite the amount of mistakes they just made. Well, I mean, you might make one or two, but if your teammate, if your opponent makes two or three, you can still take advantage of the overall, uh, the overall round count, and you can see they've got the two hills to one in their favor. They're going to have the wind condition. Incendiary is picked up by Explosive and Beersley. Iron Ice mounted up up top. I don't know if you go for the insta-give because you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have Toady trapped there. They go with the insta-give Incendiary into the entrance. It's thrown a little bit too long. There's the uh, shock out. Answer back. Exploits throws his own. Rays will get the kill. Explosive is there as well, but Explosive can't really take the cover. He's actually going to hop. And Powers on the flank once again gets two. Surprised they haven't called that out as of yet. Fearsley will take down Explosive, but still, Powers is free. To go in for the decap, it's exactly what he's going to do. Fire Nice now struggling and fighting to get a touch, but this is a bit late in the game to be fighting for just a touch. Player 9 is going to be down low. If he was up top, that'd be much better, but looks like this is going to be an E United round without question. And that's going to put them at 4-3. Map point, not series point, but at least an opportunity to send it to game 3. So I know the scoreboard doesn't reflect it right now, but if you remember reflections in the first go through of this map before we had the reset come through, Fire and Ice struck first, back-to-back -back round wins, and I pointed out to you that you said normally the team that does that ends up winning the map. Now in our map reset, E United has answered back. They gave up two rounds back-to-back -back early. Now Fire and Ice has given up two rounds back-to-back -back late in this map. Does that change your Does that change your kind of thought process? Do you believe that E United now has that edge? They have it going forward, especially because they're all map point. Absolutely. I mean, at this point, first and foremost, hats off the powers for just flanking, praised as well. That hasn't been called out from Fire and Ice, and those flanks have been killing them, like absolutely destroying them. And uh, you just don't have anybody clearing their flanks. So I got to say, man, United has all the momentum in the world without question, but you can have all the momentum. You got to close it out still for Fire and Ice. That's exactly what they need to do. Remember, we went to round nine on exhibit only for Fire and Ice to take the victory and send it to map two with them up 1-0. Bit more passive start this time, though, without question, man. Both teams they understand the gravity of the situation, and neither one wants to make the first move. Well, neither one of them wants to be the one to make the mistake, and there's there it is, Fire and Ice. They thought that their counterpunch... They thought their counterpunch was going to be waiting back. There's a late smoke, and Dyslexic will move up, and now Dyslexic goes into the entrance. You see Explosive try to angle out, try to get to that position. He was earlier. The Visceral comes through, but nobody had him marked, so nobody got the easy kill. That could come back to save him, but Power still gets the one-shot chunk inside the entrance. It allows him to push up. It's a 4v3. They've got to bait out the Incendiary, maybe even the Shock. You can see him throwing it, reeling it up. He's going to let it go here momentarily. Double Lancers on the powers. The, all the movement in the world is not going to save him. Kenny goes in. That should be at least one free kill. And Kenny can't even answer back right now. The Incendiary is stopping the retake from E United as well. Good job from Fire and Ice retaking E. As you mentioned, Powers and Kenny are down. Explosive trying to get a bit sneaky or at least try to get out of his own spawn. But Fire and Ice is keeping them at bay. My only concern is... Will F and I commit too much, get counterwiped, and put E United back in the driver's seat? It's something we have seen both rosters do from time to time, but Fire and Ice right now is at risk of falling to that. Powers, though, is going to drop off. Exploits wanting to get a bit antsy, push up. Break is going to be in. Explosive now is going to be forced to get a touch. Powers is still going to be on the ground. No one's picked him up as of yet. Prey's going to be there. He's down, and this is going to be a Fire and Ice round. Powers is not going to get there. Kenny shouldn't get a touch. He does, believe it or not, but that's four out of the way. And we're going to round nine, just like we did on exhibit that is a beautiful retake by fire and ice they know that they can get the extra downs and damage and i'm not sure if you know in that position if you got to go for that recap if your powers you stay there just a little too long you overstay your welcome get double lancer down and then they throw the incendiary deep to block off any kind of 
reinforcements. Beautiful round by Fire and Ice. I love what I see by them. They keep finding an answer to whatever E United has thrown at them. We come here to a round number nine. They've won it earlier against the Pittsburgh Knights in round nine. And there's Marks. So curious to see. I guess E United is just going to answer back by adding ammo to it. And that's exactly what they do. Yep, fair enough. We've seen that from time to time, haven't we? Looks very familiar overall. Seems to me to play, again, awesome. there's no reason to change the fight up, and, and no team should be comfortable, whether it be Fire Nice or United, changing the fight up, sending them to Pavilion. It's been it's been so back and forth that, uh, you know, changing something up could drastically, you know, impact you in a negative way. But Shocks are back now. Fire Nice wins the round where the shocks aren't present. E United's been doing a great job utilizing their shocks. So this does have some concern for me for Fire and Ice, but it's a huge positive for E United. Explosive wanting to flank, but Fire and Ice picking up on this. They're starting to track it, but E United will be the first ones to strike first on the E. Fire and Ice gonna have to find a way to push them back. Shocks are out by both teams. I don't know if the Incendiary, I'm trying to take a look. The Incendiary is still in the hands of Exploits. This is going to get very interesting here very shortly, as you can see. Powers is just trying to play defensively. They push up. There's the incendiary. Kenny will have the kill on the toady and dyslexic. It's going to be up to exploits to make a miracle happen. He's going to go down. Praise is going to be in a 1v1 opposite side of the map against Fearsley. This is a bit different as Fearsley's normally in the 1v1 against uh, Kenny as he was all map one. Triple cap domination coming through. Fearsley's going to counter back toward Powers. He's going to try to take this cover, try to put damage on both of these players from E United. They've split the forces perfectly, and E United will have the first player fall and the second. This could be a counter wipe in favor of Fire and Ice, and indeed, three out of oh, four, no. four out of four. My God, Fire and Ice, they fire back. They do fire back. Now they're going to commit quite a bit. Look to close this out onto D. You also have player eight who's going to be on E, but they're going to be outnumbered, so they have to play this appropriately or else they could run the risk of being counter wiped themselves. So this is going to be a big moment for them, and I am very shocked that E is still not cap from Fire Nice. Player eight backs off, and the pressure from Kenny a bit too much, but Exploits will catch one off guard. Ooh, and that's going to be bad. Explosive is also gone. E now is going to be a fight. This is going to be a big fight. Call it off, buddy. I love you to death. If I'm a referee, I'm starting to look down. I've got a standing eight count. This is not good. They just lost another life, and it was praised to Explosive. Once again, praised. That's the third time we've said his name in this map. Flying to a spot and getting absolutely obliterated. A triple cap domination comes through. Round nine, 2 0. E United fall to fire and ice. Phenomenal work, though, honestly, from fire and ice. But I, let me say this for E United to keep it as close as they did through and through, and also to have that victory earlier in semifinals to Hive, it does give me promise that they're going to be successful or at least have. Uh, a chance at success, right? Heading into the mid split playoffs. But for Fire Knights, let's think about their run, right? They beat Pittsburgh Knights uh, just earlier. Also, round number one, they had to face off against Rise. Then they had to beat E United in grand finals. And not to mention, too, this is their, uh, this is a championship back there. They're back to back champions when it comes to emergence day. So hats off to them. If anybody was more ready than this team, and I'd be hard pressed to say who it was for mid split playoffs, but F and I, they are ready to go into MSP. They're ready to dominate it and take it over. But again, for E United, honestly, for the past weeks, you've been harping on it. You've been saying it about how well they have been playing, how much they've been improving. You can really see that exemplified tonight. Despite them losing two very close round nines in grand finals, they lose, yes. They make some mistakes, yes. But they've improved quite a bit since we first laid eyes on them at the beginning of split two. Yeah, without a doubt, they really have improved. And they actually now... With those two losses in round nines, I think they have lost more round nines this split than anybody else. And that's a sad stat to say, and it's a scary stat for them going into a mid-split playoff, but that's just a fact of the matter. You can't avoid it anymore. I'd have to go over all my notes, but I think it's actually close. When it comes to round nines, E United keep finding themselves in them, and it's just getting harder and harder for them to keep coming away with those victories. It's like they got to be dominant in order to win these maps. Something they're going to be able to take away, though, is you know, not to, not to get you know, too down on themselves, not to hang their heads low as they, they lost a lot of these rounds because of the sneaks, because of, you know, right here, look at this. Bang. Oh, wait. Boom. Bop. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Just exploits all night has made himself a nightmare for E United in both maps. He was an absolute terror on the map. So just hats off to Fire and Ice. 
They had the wrinkles when needed. They didn't, the first half it was working with the flanks, with getting the extra rotation through the pavilion. The second half, what their, their well was, where they get that smoke off, they get exploits into the hill first. It was countered by explosive in the middle. They decided to change it up. The way they change it up is the bait and switch by bringing it back out of the hill. I mean, my hat's off to him. I am so happy for Fire and Ice and a guy like Toady. I, I, he actually said it one day. I, I think he was joking to somebody, but he, he said it pretty perfect as far back as he and I go, all the way back to his Nimbus days in Gears 4. It was my first event. It was their first event on a big stage, and I got a chance to cast over him. I've always kind of been a big fan of Toady, and Toady's always said he's a big fan of me. I don't know if that's true, but there's a little bit of a love. There's a, bit, a little bit of love there. <laughs> There's a little bit of love there. So, Tony to me, I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Fire and Ice. Those are a great fan base. It's a great organization. Hats off to them. Back-to-back -back champions. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the only back-to-back -back champions this split so far in E-Days. Uh, 100%. The only back-to-back -back champions, the only one who could have replicated that was Hive, and that was last week. And more importantly as well, Fire and Ice has the most uh, wins, at least right now, since the, the restart for Split 2 for e days so right now they sit at three total championships they're the first one to reach that number but also the first one as you mentioned to go back to back again their run was not easy they had to play against rise who had a great series yesterday in pro league they also had to play against pittsburgh knights which of course that is always a phenomenal matchup to take place and then to beat e united the cherry on top 